Guys, um, we're going to move um, into a very detailed direction. So what I just explained to you was the fact that we're building a curtain wall, right? And in between each of the panels of the curtain wall, you have this gasketing, right? The gasketing is what creates the thermal seal because you can't just have one giant 100-foot long piece of glass. Um, to, there are many methods of supporting that glass, um, and they get like really complex, or they can be really simple. Um, so here's like what we're kind of emulating, and we're going to start off just by developing the hardware for this piece, um, and then we're going to uh, start to develop the back structure for it. But I just want to give you like a, a preface uh, or a primer of different types of uh, curtain wall. So. Basically, like this curtain wall piece is using a spider clip, and then it goes back to a rigid, um, like a, a, an offset mullion in a way. So that gives it rigidity because this is offset from the glass itself. Um, curtain wall can also be set up in a way um, where it has a glass fin. Um, so this one actually has a thicker mullion, you can see. Um, but it can also have this like glass fin thing going on. Um, there you go. So that's a better picture of it, where it just gets its rigidity from an, a secondary piece of glass that's mounted onto the side of it. Um, curtain wall can be um, done with suspension cables with mullions inside the, the glazing, where the glazing sits inside you know, uh, aluminum profiles that are then supported in a very similar back structure way. Um, this is a, like a, an Apple uh, entry, Apple store entry, so it's utilizing the same thing. Um, so we're gonna be doing something more like, like this. Um, or like these. All right, so let's get back into it. Um, that's why we set this, okay? We set that point so that we could put those like little mounting discs, okay? And we're gonna simplify that a little bit because um, we don't need to go into too much detail for this thing. Um, but we have uh, four separate points that are gonna receive the same kind of mounting disc. Um, so let's go to, uh, let's do, a curve and we're gonna do a circle CNR and uh, what we're gonna do for the circle CNR is we're gonna find the normal of each of those surfaces okay so we want to be very careful about how we're developing this system because we want it we want to use a system like this both in flat uh, conditions and in warped conditions so let's take a quick look at um, what the warped condition is gonna look like so let me turn on this again, and I'm going to do grab these two surface edges. Um, you guys don't have to actually model the extra surface, but I am. Um, loft that. I'm going to put this. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to loft it yet. I need to rotate this a little bit. Let's rotate this 30 degrees. And then loft. And uh, let's put this on this layer. Uh, let's see. So set multiple surfaces. Let's select this one and that one. Okay. Oh, that's not going to work with multiple surfaces. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, we'll do. Actually, can it work with multiple surfaces? It should be able to. We just need to graft it. And set multiple surfaces. We'll go there and there. Enter. And we will graft that. So this one still worked fine, but the other one isn't giving me points. Why isn't this giving me points? OK, well, I'll troubleshoot that later, actually. But we have a, a secondary surface. Let's just use, let's just do it on one surface, and then we'll study that other surface later. Um, so we've, we're going to do circle CNR. When, um, when you do circle CNR, you need to find the normal of that point on that surface. OK, that's very important. So let's go to um, surface analysis, and we're going to do um, evaluate surface, which is going to evaluate. It's going to take a surface and it's going to measure UV location on that surface. That's important. Um, 
And then we're also going to use surface closest point, which is going to find that point on that surface and then um, test it. So we're going to go to, um, we're going to have to do one of these for each point. So we're going to um, plug one in here. And then what I'm going to do here is going to be kind of like a clean method. Um, and I want you guys to replicate this fairly accurately here. Um, we need a surface to test. So it's going to be the list of surfaces here. So we can very simply, let's call this one, um, we're going to call this glazing surface. And likewise, we'll call this glazing surface. So I'll plug that in here, and then I'm going to make this a wireless connection. So that way I can just pull this over here and utilize that for um, this, this part of the definition. So this gets plugged into both of those. Is that clear? So we're going to have one of these blocks for each one of the points. So let's see. I'm going to say copy, paste, paste. So we've got point 0.2, or point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. Okay, so that's very important. It's going to give me the normal for each of these, um, each point on each surface, and then as the surface is going to twist in future iterations, um, it will, uh, yeah, you'll, yeah. Actually, maybe we can do it this way. Let me um, set one surface, set that, and if we just override this connection, Still not doing the points. All right, I'll troubleshoot that part later. Never mind. We'll stick with this. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. That now we have the the normals, and we're going to create circles on those um, on those points. So I'm going to turn some of this stuff off, and let's start with the first one. We're going to say um, the circle is going to be on the particular point. So we're going to say point at UV, which is this. Uh, the n value is going to be that, and then we're going to create the r value, which is our radius for our disk, right? The little mounting disk. Um, we can use the same math component. So I'm going to pull this one over and kind of put it up top. And let's say our disk wants to be, and this is radius, by the way. So if we want a 3-inch diameter disk, then we want to do 1.5 for our radius. And I'll put that in there. Okay. Actually, let's go up to two. We'll kind of exaggerate it a little bit. Nope, I changed my mind. One point five. Sorry. So uh, we're gonna do the same thing with all four of these. So you, I mean, feel free to um, replicate these however you wish, but um, you're just gonna have to reconnect with each one the point and the normal. It's going to look like a lot of spaghetti for a little while, but once you get it connected and stuff, it's going to look a little cleaner. So now what you have is a set of four disks that we can then do the extrusion for that's going to make it look like what we saw in our, um, in our precedent, which was uh, something like this. Okay? So um, I'm real quickly, if you guys don't have any questions on what I did right here, I'm going to quickly just like in this current thought well actually no I'll separate it I'll do the I'll do the disk extrusion in a separate video so what questions do you have about this none yes surface CP okay so the surface CP and evaluate surface they're both found under surface analysis so surface analysis and it's uh, evaluate and surface closest point yeah Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to catch up, then we'll do the extrusion. 